Legendary Bowling Center, Stars and Strikes Doubles, features the best Candlepin bowlers from around New England in team competition. Stars and Strikes Doubles is produced in conjunction with the New Hampshire Candlepin Bowling Association. And now your hosts, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. Hi, everyone, and welcome again to Candlepin Stars and Strikes, the doubles edition, right here at Londonderry Bowling Center every Saturday at noontime. I'm Doug Brown, or am I Dan Murphy? I'm not sure, but one of us is missing. No, all kidding aside, Doug will be back two weeks from today. I'll be doing it solo, and I got backing of the crew. We're going to gather all our resources and get through this without the master, Doug Brown, being here. And he told me to say all those nice things about him. This is semifinal week, of course, in the doubles format. Three teams are now left. One of them will be the next qualifier into the Tournament of Champions two weeks from today, or next week, I should say. Uh, we've yet to have one team win two matches in a row. Rico Baldinelli and Gary Karen are going to try to do just that. So without any further ado, let's meet the teams that are going to be bowling today. First of all, our number three seeded team, um, Rico Baldinelli from Amesbury, Massachusetts. His partner, Gary Carrington from Plastow, New Hampshire. Rico carries an average of 121. His roll-off score was 682. Gary Carrington, 131 average, and his roll-off score, 678. And challenging him this week, trying to start a streak of their own, will be from Natick, Massachusetts, Tom O'Brien, carrying an average of 128, and his roll-off score, 699. And his partner, Wayne Denon, from Wakefield, Massachusetts, carrying an average of 123, and his roll-off score to qualify for the show at 685. That's our matchup for today. We're going to have three strings of candlepin competition. Total pinfall, of course, moves them on to championship week next week. Got a lot to tell you about. Skins format coming up. A lot of other things to catch you up on. We'll be back one short minute, and we'll get this match underway. Stay with us, won't you? Okay, just to catch you up where we are, two weeks ago, um, Reggie Deline and Joe Ashline bowled uh, Bob Mazur and Steve Vadney, defeating them 414 to 378. And they came back the following week, last week, to make it two in a row, but they ran into uh, Rico Baldinelli and Gary Carrington, and they were to able to start their own streak at 334 to a 298 victory, a low scoring affair, but a win is a win. And they're back to make it two in a row, and uh, you see, um, Tom O'Brien and Wayne Denon coming in today. And, of course, the winner of this match will move on to championship week next week against Frank Rose and Dan Broder. So you're all caught up. And now to get us going, Gary Carrington on lane 30. Last week, Gary and Rico had a real tough start throwing just a 92, but they came back with a 119 followed by a 123, and it was enough to squeak out that victory at 334 to 298 over Joe Ashline and Reggie DeLine. And Gary starts with a nine. Gary is a machine operator for AT&T in North Andover. Does most of his bowling at Pilgrim Lanes in Haverhill as well as the Exeter Lanes in Exeter, New Hampshire. Good break off the head pin. Gary leaving just the one and the three. Ooh, will he get it? Yes, he does. A little light in the head pin, but he got a nice side kick and a pull a piece of wood out of the channel, I believe. Watch this. Yes, back for the three pin. Gary will take it. Now our first look at Wayne Denon in a while. Wayne's last appearance on the double show was back in October of 92. He was partnered with uh, Pete Pereira. That's a nine for Wayne. 
and they were defeated by Dan Broder and Mike Poole in 377-373. And once you know, one of those people that defeated him will be here next week, Dan Broder. The only other appearance for Wayne was on the double show back in October of 91. He was partnered with Steve Plant, and they lost to Don Weatherby and John Maffeo, 392-382. And it's a pair of nines. Now Rico works on the spear, put up by his partner, Gary Carrington, in the second. Off target to the right, but he drops seven. 26 through two now, and an eight-pin advantage for Baldinelli and Carrington. Make it nine. 35 now through three. Rico works at Baldinelli's bowl, bowl away in Amesbury. That close to a spare. That's a bowling center previously owned by his father and uncle, I believe. And that's a 10 box, 45 now through four. And now our first look at Tom O'Brien in a while. Tom has been with us many times before. Nine and five is his record on our shows. Carry an average of 128, as I mentioned at the top of the show. One, seven, eight, and 10 for Tom. And it's three nines now, 27 for the team of O'Brien and Denon. the port sider, the left-hander from Natick, Massachusetts. Usually an interviewer's dream. Tom has never lost for words. Thirty-six. Through four, a nine pin advantage now for the gentleman you're looking at now and his partner, Rico Baldinelli. Very close. It's nine, and it's 54 at the halfway point, game number one. Remember, it's semifinal week. Winner of this match goes into the final against Dan Broder and Frank Rose next week for that qualification into the Tournament of Champions. And that will leave, after next week, leave us just one spot open. Missing the head pin left, but just leaves the one and the three. And a mark in the sixth. Takes advantage of those, those breaks. Now Wayne Denon. Had the pleasure of bowling next to Wayne in the last Pro Tour. Excellent candlepin bowler. Is that average? Certainly verifies at 123. Two and a four left. And there's the first mark for the team of Denon and O'Brien. Spare in the fifth. It 
little extra body English on that. Dwayne thought he had a decent opportunity for a strike, but the five, seven, eight, nine left. Six on a spare. Draws his team within two, temporarily anyways, through five boxes. He'll lose a few on count here, plus the, the spare that Rico will fill now in the sixth. Seven and ten left for Rico. Well, oh, there go the one and the two. Seven, ten still left. Got the crowd excited with that, and I think Rico was a little excited about the possibility of making that spare, but it didn't happen for him. And that's eight. Seventy-eight now through seven. Last week, as I say, they opened with just a 92 game. Well, obviously, they were able to bounce back as they're here trying to make it two in a row and would like nothing better to make it three in a row next week. There's a great spear by Rico Baldinelli. Played it on the inside. Watch the head pin do most of the damage. Right there. Great shot by Rico. And equally as well is a strike by Tom O'Brien. Scrambles the pins up there for the strike. For a strike of the match. Second mark for the team. That's the fill on the strike, make it nine. Eighty-nine through an eight. Gary Carrington, eighty-eight, plus the ball in the eighth. Carrington's married, wife Kathleen. They have two children, Matthew, 11 years old, and Michael, five. <laughs> and a 10 for Gary, 103 now through nine. Just touching the head pin. The head pin is going to stay. Four horsemen right plus the eight pin. And no wood to help Gary. One, three, six, ten, and the eight. And make it a ten. Opening game, one thirteen for the team of Rico Baldinelli and Gary Carrington. So if Wayne Denon was going to grab the lead for his team, he'd need, definitely need one mark at least. Still falling. Five, six, nine, ten. Piece of wood just to the left of the five pin. Might want to try that. Yes, no, maybe, no. Great effort, though. Use the wood next to the five pin and cleared away everything but the six. 99 through nine. Let's take a look at that. Plays the ball off the wood, pulls another piece out of the left-hand channel, but nothing carries the six pin. So the lead is just four pins for Baldinelli and Carrington. Everything but the five. Now 
this for a chance of, for the lead for his team. Ooh, dropped that one badly. Actually dropped that one behind the foul line. But we'll make it a 10. After one, the team of Gary Carrington, 113. O'Brien and Denon, 109. We'll be back with string number two. Stay with us, won't you? Okay, string number two. Tom O'Brien will get it underway. Team trailing by just four pins, and he's going to have something to say about that. Strike in the first. This time he picked the same, same thing as last strike. One, two pocket. Seven pin was a little stubborn, but there it goes. Lane 29 now. Looking for the double. A little full in the head pin. Wants the 10 pin out of there. Two, four, seven, ten. Two pieces of wood in front of the 10 pin. Seven on the strike, and nine, 26. Now Rico up on lane 30. Rico has a high single of 181. Four horsemen left for Rico. Ten. So the lead swings the other side. O'Brien and Denton now lead by three. Nice looking ball by Rico. Five nine left. Clear shot at is a piece of wood to the right, but should not be a factor. Just sliding by to the right. Almost looks like Rico sometimes fades with his steps to the left, which would leave that ball out to the right. Pair of tens, though. Six pin advantage in this game. Two pins overall for the team of O'Brien and Denon. Let's see. Nine pin left. And a roadblock. Two pieces of wood in front of them, in front of the nine pin. Oh, yes. Very nicely done. Look, made it look a lot easier than it was. Had to come up high in the wood. Kept everything in play for the nine pin for the spare. Just the four fill, though. A little light on the head pin, 40 after three. Wayne is a contractor, and he does a lot of his bowling at the Londonderry Bowling Center right here in, in the Melrose Bowl in Melrose, Massachusetts. He's married, wife of June. Make it nine and 49 through four. Gary Carrington's roll-off score. The roll-off scores range from 703, the top seed Frank Rose, down to Joe Ashland in 10th at 660. That's three tens in a row. Pinning well, 30 after three now. The lead now is six pins overall for O'Brien and Denon, though. Short approach by Gary Carrington. Threw his hands up. He knew that was off target. <laughs> if you heard that, Gary says, I don't know where it is. I think he's referring to the head pin. And 
And seven, and it's 37. We'll take a short break. We'll come back and finish game number two, semifinal week from the Londonderry Bowling Center. team of O'Brien and Denon quietly has increased their lead to just eight pins from being down by four after the game number one. Good kick out of, of the uh, two pin that time. Leaves himself the six pin for the spare. Actually, I think that was a four pin that went down. Oh, no. Sliding by to the left. No spare opportunity there that... Tom O'Brien would like to have that one back again. 59 at the halfway point, game number two. Half Worcester left. out by Tom 68 through six now both teams not really on top of their game so far anyways Rico trying to make that adjustment have that ball come into from the right a little more than it has been still a little light got a good break with the 10 pin going out of there two four five and seven Two, the five, and the seven, but nothing touched the four. How does that happen? Forty-six. Crowd trying to get Rico started. Light hit that time. Got a decent break though. The two and the four left. Eastwood behind the two and also one in front of the two and the four. Looks pretty good. Fourth mark for the team. All spares so far. Rico Baldinelli and Gary Carrington. Wayne Denon, lane 30. Two, four, and ten. turn away immediately on that. He knew that was too far left. <laughs> 77 now through seven. I'm wondering who the other tournament champion qualifiers are. Seated number one right now, Ed Drollman and Brian Fuller at 430. Then comes John Maffeo and Dave Arsenal at 405. Bob Kelly and Larry Valcourt at 381. And Stan Mayo and Scott Richardson at 347. And I'm sure one of these two teams would like to be qualifier number five. Only two slots left. Tournament champions will be here before we know it. It's a five fill on the spare. Four horsemen left and the nine pin piece of wood behind the one and two. Yes, very nicely done. Watch the replay. Actually misses the head pin. Use, gets the benefit of the wood snapping in behind the head pin and the left or right side wall clear out the nine. Two marks in a row now for the team of Carrington and Baldinelli. Half Worcester left. Ooh. Just when you think one team is going to mount some offense, a bad fill or a bad ball 
Kind of makes it. Sit back again and, oh boy, just three pins. Took out the head pin and nothing else. <laughs> 76 through eight. 85 for Tom O'Brien and his partner, Wayne Denon. This is a match similar to last week. Kind of a low scoring affair, but close. One, three, and eight pins left for Tom. Ninety-five now through nine. Eight pin drop this time. Six and nine left for Tom. And he may have to negotiate with a piece of wood that's out just to the left. No, nope, got by it. Great shot. Spare in the tenth. And under this format, he'll stay right up there and fill this last spare. Gives him 105 plus this bonus ball. And again, just four, 109. And a two string total of 218. Tough crowd here today. Tough crowd. Just six, eighty two through nine. crowd is not being kind to these bowls. <laughs> they want a little more productivity out of them, and they're not getting it. Off target again to the right. Oh, yes. Fair in the tenth. Four horsemen in the nine. No wood to help, Rico. Here's the replay. Plays it to the right of the head pin. Domino effect. Carries the nine pins, fair in the tenth, 92 plus the bonus ball. Oh, and just three, 95 and a 208 total, so it's a 10 pin advantage for Tom O'Brien and Wayne Denon will be com coming back shortly with string number three. Don't go away. Crowd has done it scolding and at the break. Let's see if it works. Well, Gary listened. Nine pin drop. Just the four pin. Trailing by ten. Moves over to lane twenty-nine would like nothing better to have a decent fill and another mark. Bounce that one, but got away with it. Just the five pin. This for two in a row. Ooh. <laughs> it's down, Gary. It's down. <laughs> a little extra body English on that. He thought he went by it. Two in a row now. It's only happened one other time in the match, and that was... The same team of Baldinelli and Carrington. Wayne Denon now, see if he can protect that 10 pin advantage. He's got to put a, a couple marks up if he's going to do that. One, two, seven, nine, and 10. Get in a few weeks, we have our skins format coming up. Talked a little bit about it last week. We're going to have the same number of contestants, four bowlers on each show. However, they will be competing individually and they'll be only bowling two games. The highest two game total for two of the four bowlers will determine them coming back as 
more or less defending champs. However, along the way, the skins, each frame will be worth a certain amount of money. And of course, in the skins format, you're looking for a lot of ties. Two tie, all tie. And if no one is determined a winner of one box, that's that amount of money is carried over to the next until we do determine a winner. So the money can mount up. All the bowlers will be able to take all their skins, that money home with them, create their own prize money. But the two-game total, that'll enable that team, or those two bowlers, I should say, not as a team, come back next week for more skins. So an interesting format. Hope you'll enjoy it. It's coming up several weeks down the road. That's a fill on the spare now. 34 now, and they have taken the lead back from Tom O'Brien and Wayne Denon. And 42 through three. There you see, box is completed. They're leading by six. 16 in the string, but six overall, which is the mo more important stat, obviously. One, three, and seven left for Rico. Two open frames. Rico pulled up that time. Just wasn't comfortable on his approach. Regroups. 51 now through four. Tom O'Brien for his third and fourth. triangle cut the three around the six didn't carry that six spin for the spare just like last week low scoring affair but close there you see the total lead now five pins for Baldinelli and Carrington one three six and eight left for Tom Gain one and count if you were to take down these three. And he does just that. We'll go to a short break. As it stands now, a four-pin advantage for Baldinelli and Carrington. We'll be back. Semi-final week. We'll finish this match up. Stay with us. Okay, and then there were six. Six frames remaining. Gary Carrington trying to protect a four-pin advantage. time up first and second frames he was able to put two spares up for his partner Rico it's a tough one Be pretty if it goes though one nine and ten sixty at the halfway point on the left, 3-6 on the right. Pinning is the name of the game in this match. Nines and tens are going to be so important going down the final frames. And it's a 10 for Gary. 70 through 6. Chance for Wayne Denon to get the lead back for his team now. If you like high scoring affairs, you're going to be a little disappointed today, but if you like a close match, you've got it. Oh, big strike for Wayne Denon in the fifth. 
chance to regain the lead for his team. Let's take a look at that one. In the one three pocket, five and seven pins, last two to go. Off target that time, watch out, still falling. Everything but the 10 pin. A couple pieces of wood next to it, rolling against the 10 pin. There's another piece of wood out in front though. He's right on it, spare on strike. And he does regain the lead. By seven. That'll increase when his partner, Tom O'Brien, gets up to fill the spare. Okay, final rotation now with the four bowlers. Rico Petroselli, uh, Rico, I always call him Petroselli for some reason. As you can tell, uh, Rico Petroselli used to be a famous ball player for the Red Sox. It was a real favorite of mine. And it's two shows in a row now. It's Baldinelli, folks. That close, will it? No, it won't. Eighty through seven now. Three frames remaining. Trailing by seven already, you have to figure he has to put at least one more mark up for his team. Probably two. Between him and Gary Carrington. Right through the heart. Well, if he puts a spare up now, it's going to be an awful pretty one. No, what he doesn't want is a bad frame. And it's a seven, 87. Tom O'Brien for his final two frames for the day, working on a spare. And another big nine drop. That gives them a 16 pin advantage now and threatening to go higher. Three in a row now, striking two spares, as you can see, and taking control, finally. Tom doing a little house cleaning. Cleared a ball out of the channel, knocked down the 10 pin. Now he'll fill the spare. Kicks out the 10 pin again. Another great fill, 9, 94 now through seven. Chance for another one to make it four marks in a row. No. no. Still a little light at the end of the tunnel for Gary Carrington. Not much, though. He's going to have to have two huge marks, and then he's going to need some help from Wayne Denon. 103, and it's a 26-pin advantage. You would think that Gary Carrington would need a couple strikes. Two, four, seven, ten. No, it's not going to happen for Gary Garrington and Rico Baldinelli this week, anyways. And we've yet to have a team win two matches in a row. Will Tom O'Brien and Wayne Denham be the one? Well, next week, Frank Rose and Dan Broder will have something to say about that. be open. Tom O'Brien will just, in fact, just about have the match won now. A nine and 106 gives him a three-string total of 314. And Wayne Denon is already at 321. So the match is there. They'll move on to championship week next week against Frank Rose and Dan Broder. And of course, Bigger paycheck on the line, but more importantly, the qualification into the Tournament of Champions. Next week, we'll have to keep an eye on the score. Of course, you know that's how they qualify, or the seating is depending on that winning score during championship week. So the replay of that last 10 box.
Triangle. Three, five, six for Wayne. And it's a nine and 122. And the final scores will be posted. 340 now for Tom O'Brien and Wayne Denon. And it's a 26 pin victory for Tom and Wayne. We'll be back to talk to the bowlers, catch you up on next week as well as tomorrow's single show. Stay with us. Welcome back, everyone. And uh, the final score again, 340 for um, Tom O'Brien and Wayne Denon. 314 for Gary Carrington and Rico uh, Baldinelli. Eight spares and no strikes for the team of Carrington and Baldinelli. And on the other side of the ledger, five spares and three strikes for Tom O'Brien and Wayne Denon. Not a uh, real high scoring match, but it was close going down the stretch. And, and uh, of course, Tom O'Brien and uh, Wayne Denon were able to put those three or four marks in a row and really took control of the match from then on. So we'll be without any ado, let's bring the uh, runners up. I know. Uh, I got something that'll make this a little painless anyways. We got to check here. It's almost a dollar a pin. Uh, Gary, I can't remember a match that I've seen you bowl in by yourself or with a partner that you, your team didn't have a strike. We didn't have a strike? Did we have a spare? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> no, we had, you had eight of those, but they came few and far between. Uh, you, you, can't hit, you can't get strikes without hitting a head pin, and I bet you we missed a head pin 90% of the time, <laughs> both of us. Yeah, you seem, Rico, if you were going to miss, you were missing to the right most of the time. Were you trying anything to try to correct that? No, that's my mistake. I didn't try anything to correct it. I mean, I usually never go right all the time, but today it didn't. Maybe I should have tried something, but I didn't. Stupid. Lack of experience. <laughs> well, one of those days, I guess. Well, I got a check here for 125 for each of you. That's 125, not a dollar 25. One. Yeah, that's a that's yours, Gary. And uh, one more chance for. Uh, Qualification in the Tournament of Champions. Hope to see you both back. Thanks. Thanks. This applause is for you. <laughs> Thank you, fellas. I guess Gary summed it right up. He just wasn't on top of their game today, and the 314 really shows that. But uh, the type of bowler they are, they will be back. Okay, let's bring up the champs for this week. Tom O'Brien and Wayne Denon. I haven't got any check for you this week, though. You know that, right? That's fine. That's fine. Hopefully it's in the end. <laughs> yeah. Now, Tom, I mentioned at the show that you're an interviewer's dream, and I've got about eight minutes to fill, and I think I've used a minute and a half. We've, uh, we've got a few more. Um, well, when did you really thought, when did you really think that you had this match uh, under control? To be honest with you, Danny, never. Uh, I mean, you're looking at Rico Baldinelli, who's been out of the game for the last three or four years. It's great to see Rico back, and... Uh, you know, he's, he's a dynamite Caliphant bowler, and I'm glad to see him back into the game. And what can you say about Babe? I mean, close match like that, you know, Babe rises above the rest of the competition. You're waiting for him to get untracked, both of those bowlers, Wayne? No, no. I was hoping to get about a 20-pin, 25-pin <laughs> lead in the last two boxes, so I forced him to throw the two strikes. Well, you know, you saw him struggle last week. You think, well, they can't struggle two weeks in a row, and I'm in for a tough time. But it just didn't happen today for him. Yeah. I know. Well, um, you know, both teams were all over the place. And even when we were hitting the head pin, we weren't knocking too many pins down. So we can't blame it on the pins and everything. We just didn't bowl well today. No, Babe last week and his, and his match started coming on at the end. And, uh, you know, it just seems like he was getting the, the adrenaline starting to flow. He got the two marks to start the third string. And I said, oh, here we go. Here's the real Babe stepping up. But uh, he was just off the head pin quite a bit. And I have a great partner in Wayne. And... We were able to hang on. I threw a couple of strikes, and I missed the single, but I didn't throw the ball like I'm supposed to be throwing it. Was I lying, folks? This guy is great. This guy is great. He's filled all the eight minutes himself. He says, uh, well, no one's won two matches in a row. Your chance, not only two matches in a row, but a qualification in the tournament of champions. But they got two guys next week that might have something to say about that, and Frank Rose and Dan Brody. You know both of those bowlers, right? Yeah, Danny, uh, I'd say it's about two or three years ago, I bowled against Danny and Peter Pereira, and... Danny was off his game, and we snuck out by a couple of pins, so I think he owes me one. But, uh, oh, wait, I owe him one. I owed um, him last year. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, until next week, congratulations, fellas. A win is a win, and uh, let's bring a better bowling next week, huh? Okay. Okay, there you have it again, 340, 314. They'll move into championship week next week against Frank Rose and Dan Broder. Thank you for making us part of your day. Don't forget, tomorrow, 
I mentioned the single show. It's actually our mix, mixed doubles format on the single show. And next, and tomorrow at noontime from Park Place Lanes, look for John Maffeo and Tony Wellspring taking on Joe Ashline and Carol Downey. I'm Dan Murphy for Doug Brown and the entire crew. See you next week.